Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Parking Lot Preview. Today, it is July 18th. Alongside Mike Maynard, I'm Matt Coates. Thank you guys for joining us today. The Hyannis Harbor Hawks traveling pretty far east, Mike, to take on the Orleans Firebirds here for a road game, which we're going to talk about more later. Is something scary for the Hawks? Yeah, 100%. The Hawks haven't had a lot of success on the road. Even last night, we'll get into that as well. But last night, weren't able to have success on the road. This is the rainout game, mm -hmm. the rescheduled game from the Saturday matchup that was supposed to happen against Orleans. Did not happen due to rain. Here we are, back again. No off day today, but we got the off day a little bit ago. Playing some baseball today. Looks like we'll get the game in. No rain. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to rain last night, I think, and it really didn't. It much. rained a little bit overnight. When I got up this morning, it was definitely wet out. Okay. Not a lot. Not too much to no. play baseball. Yeah. So, looks We're like we'll get it in. Yeah. Yep, for sure. And the Harbor Hawks are entering today's contest at 15-10-1, sitting at third in the Western Division, which we have been for quite some time now, it seems like. Orleans Firebirds at 7-19. and 19. But, Mike, like I alluded to earlier, when you look at the difference between this team at McKeon Park versus on the road, it's night and day. On the road... Four and eight record. We're playing at home. We lead the Cape Cod Baseball League with a 292 batting average with an 839 OPS. And we're second in the league in slugging with 416. But Mike, you get on that bus, you travel to the road, something flips in these guys and it's not the right direction. We are ninth in the league in batting average, OPS, and slugging when we're on the road. Clearly night and day from home games. Yeah, it's hard to really know why. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. We haven't really seen this. Uh, I know you were here last year. I was here last year and even two years ago. It hasn't really been a thing where the team has struggled on the road. It's not like the Cape Cod Baseball League has that big of a home field advantage. Um, it just seems like maybe, like you said, hopping on that bus and having to travel a little bit further than usual is just giving, giving the players a little bit of problems here and there. I mean, it's not terrible. Four and eight isn't good, but no. it's, you know, it's definitely something to improve upon. And um, hopefully tonight, Obviously, a different outcome coming, but like you said, it's really been a struggle all around at the plate uh, for the Harbor Hawks when playing at a different field than McKean Ballpark, and we'll hopefully figure out that they'll be going on the right path back again tonight because Eldridge Park haven't had a lot of success there to start so far, but again, we'll see. Tonight should be a different game. All, all circumstances are different of every course. night, obviously. The Cape Cod Baseball League games happen so often, so frequent, that really everything just needs to be turned over. You're looking at new players all the time and new coaches – well, at the beginning of the year. Um, but a lot of player turnover um, obviously plays a factor as well. So we'll see. Tonight's a different matchup, but hopefully make it 5-8 and eight on the road. That would be a step in the right direction. I'm sure we'd all love to see that tonight. And like you alluded to, not much success at Eldridge Park so far this season. We're 1-1 one and one against the Orleans Firebirds this year. That one loss coming recently, I believe it was on July 2nd, against the Orleans Firebirds. And a really brutal, misty game. It was a game, the miss got so bad, guys, that our two broadcasters that night, Jacob Irons and Nico Sharp, had to put away their books, put away their laptops, because they were getting soaked out there. It's a game that only went, I believe, six and a half innings. We lost 3-1. They were throwing Colin Fang, absolutely phenomenal pitcher, out of Harvard. It was really hard to get a lot of traction offensively in that affair. Our one run came from a Mason White full side homer. And then at home, we fared better offensively, and we did so against the Firebirds 6-3 victory. Yeah, obviously a tough game to really look at that loss in, in Orleans last time because you mentioned that the miss was terrible. Players were saying they were having trouble picking up seams on balls, and Jackson West said he couldn't even really see when he was catching back there. And I remember we talked to Stone Cushing when he was pitching, and he couldn't even get traction on the mound. He, he was losing his footing. The mound was wet. It was just a mess. So really a game that you can't necessarily look at and give too much attention to because obviously the circumstances were – Quite interesting and don't really happen most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, but, again, weather looks better today. I'm squinting right now because I should have worn sunglasses. But there are clouds, <laughs> but the sun's out. Um, so we should get a good game. Hopefully everybody's playing in an equal playing field. Not that it wasn't equal, but playing in a normal playing field, yeah. I guess, would be an ideal situation for tonight's game. Mike, it's one of those classic Cape days. It doesn't look very sunny, but if I take my sunglasses off, I'm probably going to be squinting a little bit too. I don't know what it is. That sun. Sounds really powerful, guys, if you didn't know. With that being said, Mike, let's talk about last night's game. We were on the road again, took on the town with Commodores. What happened there? Uh, not a lot offensively, <laughs> honestly. It was a tough game uh, for the bats, for the Harbor Hawks. Again, we talked about it on the road. Really, the bats just haven't really had a lot of success as of late. 
last night was more of the same. I mean, two runs got scored. Kane Kepley scored on a wild pitch, and Eric Snow scored on a fielder's choice in the same inning there towards the end of the game. So really not a lot of great offensive output. And then the pitching did pretty well. Only gave up three runs, a 3-2 to two loss. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but 3-2 to two loss to the Falmouth Commodores last night. And uh, it was a tale of new, two new pitchers. Two mm-hmm. new pitchers got, got their first Cape League experiences. Grant Stevens got the start, went three innings scoreless. Had a lot of success in the mound. Talked to him after the game. He actually wasn't planning on playing summer ball until the Cape Cod Baseball League came calling. And then he had a job lined up to uh, work in architecture. Wow. And uh, he said he was very excited that he got to quit that job pretty early on and uh, come play baseball. So looks like a guy that could be a mainstay in the rotation. Who knows? Had three strikeouts in three innings. Gave up no runs. That's all you really need. So Mm -hmm. good game for him. And then Chandler Dorsey also got his first inning of work on the Cape. And uh, went one inning, scoreless. So, overall, pitching had a good game. Hitting, not so much. It was just another game to really forget on the road at the plate for the Harbor Hawks. I mean, Coach Carricker seemed a little bit defeated. Not defeated, but a little bit just like we got to get things going on the right track again. Our approach just re- really isn't going well at the plate right now. And everybody individually needs to kind of figure it out. Um, figure out what, what was working at the beginning of the season, what's working at home. Bring that to road games. Hopefully, again, that can happen tonight. Completely agree, Mike. I've said it on this show earlier in the season, and I'll say it again today. If you pitch in the Cape Cod Baseball League and you only allow three runs, you set yourself up to win a lot of games that way. Unfortunately, last night wasn't that that way, and that's how it goes sometimes. But if the pitching staff keeps throwing like they did last night, especially with new guys coming in and excelling right away, this team is in a great spot for sustain, six, sustained success in the regular season and postseason. So encouraging to see that on the mound. Hopefully tonight, like you said, Coach sees his guys fix their approach at the plate, and we see some more success there. But that's being said, Mike, we saw the Orleans Firebirds play a game last night. That was against our rivals, like the Tuit Cataliers. What happened there? They got out to an early two-run lead there in, in the beginning of the game. Really, things fell apart, though. Tuit put up runs throughout the middle innings at a pretty high rate. End up losing 5-6 to six to Katua in Katua last night. They came away with a little bit of a comeback attempt in the ninth inning there. Put two runners on. They had a runner on second and third with one out. Mm-hmm. Strike out and a fly out or a line out. Game over. So a close game for Orleans against a good opponent. Not able to come away with a win. Um, but overall, a, a middle-of-the-range scoring game. You know, pitching, obviously, successful. Hitting, successful. Harbor Hawks, last night we saw a, a tale of one story. The pitching had a good game and the hitting didn't. So Orleans put, a, put together an all-around pretty solid game. Just not able to come away with a win last night against the Tuit. And I think, you know, it's we, we just go, no, whoa, we just went over last night's game against the Falmouth Commodores. We do have to give credit where credit is due. Falmouth did pitch a very good game course, last night. Yes. It, it was not necessarily just Hyannis struggling. It was also, Falmouth did pitch a very, very good game last night. And it gave the, the bats in the Harbor Hawks lineup trouble. Orleans, maybe we'll be able to do that again. I got a bug on my leg, but... Uh, Again, Orleans, altogether, a pretty decent effort last night. Almost came away with a win. Late comeback attempt didn't come to fruition. And uh, Katuit comes away with a win. But they're looking to bounce back tonight. Got a home game tonight against the Harbor Hawks. We'll see what happens. Yeah, like you mentioned, those Katuit kind of leaders, they're a formidable opponent, as you guys have seen in our matchups with them so far this season. So Orleans only falling by one run. Very competitive game there against a competitive team. I'm sure they'll be fired up to host us tonight. Hopefully get a victory of their own. But we'll see. Obviously, we're going to look to prevent that. That being said, Mike, let's preview this patch, pitching matchup. It's going to be a matchup of two tall, hard throwers. For us on the mound, a 6'7 right-handed pitcher. Aaron Mishulam making his first start on Cape this summer. Yeah, five games so far on Cape. No starts. So mm-hmm. we'll see if that creates difference in his approach, difference in his ability to pitch a good game. We'll see. But... You got 50 innings at school, 3.65 ERA, 50 strikeouts, and 14 walks. With Hyanna so far, seven innings pitched, 5.14 ERA, six Ks, and six walks. So, hasn't got a start so far, but has pitched a lot. Has pitched a good amount. Got in a bunch of games. Got a lot of experience. You mentioned it. He's got that tall frame, six foot seven, good velo. We'll see if he he's in for a good game tonight. Hopefully, because this Orleans lineup has struggled here and there. We mentioned it on a parking lot preview early on in the season. The Orleans lineup wasn't really having a lot of success to start. Haven't really picked it up to where they'd like to be at. So Aaron Mishulam in for an interesting matchup. Should have a good game. We'll see. But, again, his first start, we got to see. We'll get the jitters out. 
but it's a different it's a different mindset. You come in with a different game plan and you're able to prepare differently. You know you're getting a certain amount of pitches at least. You know you're mm-hmm. getting to at least get in the game guaranteed. So we'll see what he does. Hopefully he has a good game. Of course, like you mentioned, always a different mindset and preparation when you're going from planning to be a relief pitcher to planning to be a starter. So interesting to see how our guy from Michigan State adapts today. Hopefully he pitches like his teammate, Joseph Jerwak. That would be great. I wouldn't complain, that's for sure. On the other side of the mound, though, Mike, starting for the Firebirds, is a guy with similar experience on Cape this summer. Five games, however, he does have one start. That's Brennan Cyber out of Vanderbilt. 6'5", like I said, going to be two tall guys out there today, Mike. What do you see out of him? Another right-handed pitcher, 42 and two-thirds innings pitched at school, just above a 5 ERA, 37 strikeouts, 12 walks. So not not getting a lot of strikeouts, but not walking a lot of guys either. Mm-hmm. He pitches to contact, getting guys out as high, at a high clip. So far with Orleans, nine innings pitched, just two more than Aaron Mishulam. Six ERA, 13 strikeouts mm-hmm. on Cape Cod in nine innings. So he did kind of pick up the strikeout numbers on Cape so far, but we'll see what he's in for tonight. Two walks, which is crazy mm-hmm. as well. Five games, one start, as you mentioned. It'll be interesting because this is another matchup. We talked about it with Jacob Irons yesterday. This is a pitcher that likes strikeouts, doesn't like to walk guys. And this is a Harbor Hawks lineup that loves to walk and doesn't, doesn't like, like to strike, strike out. out that much. So it'll be it'll be crazy. It was fun to watch last night. The Falmouth did pitch a very good game. They figured it out. But, again, this, this Harbor Hawks lineup is very disciplined at the plate. Two walks so far this season. I would be surprised if he didn't walk two more at least in this one tonight. The Harbor Hawks – Love to get on base by any means possible, and did walk a couple times last night, even despite the Falmouth Commodores not walking a lot of guys in their pitching staff. So we'll be in for an interesting matchup, a pitcher that loves to get guys out with a strikeout on Cape against a team that really doesn't like to do it and really likes to get on base a lot. So I'm I'm excited. Should be a good matchup. Two guys with around eight innings mm-hmm. pitched on Cape. So got some experience. No one's coming in new, brand new like last night. Should be a good matchup. For sure, Mike, really polarizing numbers there when you see the 13 Ks to 2 walk ratio went on Cape this summer. Like you said, though, something's got to give tonight. We're going to see. Hopefully, it's the highest hitters that stick to their approach and win that matchup. Maybe chase our, the Vandy boy out of the game early. But only time will tell, Mike. That being said, someone's going to be a player of the game. Hopefully, a player of the game after a victory. You want to take this one or you want me to go first? You go first. I need, to, I need to think about this one for a second here. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to take a guy. Who scored last night? One of our two runs scored. Nothing crazy. Eric Snow, a mainstay in the lineup, and I think one of the more interesting stories for the Harbor Hawks this summer, a guy who has so quietly been so successful. It seemed early on in the year he was kind of the odd man out in the middle infield. We had so much talent there, and only so many guys could play on a given night, that Snow was more of a rotation piece. And then a few weeks into the season, you're like, oh, he's leading the team in batting average. He's leading the league in batting average. And still... To this point, gotten some more starts, a lot of time in DH as well as in the middle infield, and those numbers are staying very high. Got his first homer of the season just a few games ago at home, and has consistently been hitting. And it's something that fascinates me so much as a player who doesn't have the luxury of knowing he's going to be out there every day like a Kane Kepley does, and he's still going out there and producing every single game. So I expect to see him in the lineup tonight, hopefully. And if he is, I know he's going to produce because he has all year. You mentioned guys have, being in the lineup today. I'm going to go with Michael Vitalo for my pick. I'm hoping he's in the lineup today because Blake Cavill's gone. He's playing with the Savannah Bananas right now. Unbelievable. Great for him. That's <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but Michael Vitalo has also been awesome at the plate so far to start his summer. He's had a lot of success. He's been with the team since the beginning here and is hitting above 300 so far this season. Been a mainstay in the middle of that order, usually batting around cleanup, maybe fifth. Mm-hmm. Just knocking guys in, driving runners in when he can, extra base hits, a lot of base hits, just getting on base at a high rate and playing a good first base. Been playing third here mm-hmm. a few times, but I think he'll be at first tonight with Blake Cabell being gone. I think he's in for a big game again. Dallas Baptist University bringing some guys that we want to have a lot of success. Michael DePaulo, one of those guys. Hopefully he's in for a big game tonight against the Orleans Firebirds. I'd love to see that, Mike. Another guy who you can't argue with that pick. Great player offensively and defensively. And now it's time for the last segment, the Mike Maynard special. That will be our score prediction segment. I'll take the reins here first, Mike. We talked about it earlier. This is a team who struggles on the road. Four and eight's not the worst record in the world, though. Still able to squeak by some wins. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to squeak one out against the Orleans Firebirds. 
It'll be more of a lower scoring game, just like last night. I'm calling a 5-4 to four victory for the Hawks, traveling to play an Eastern foe in the Orleans Firebirds, getting a big dub at Eldridge Park tonight. I like that. I'm going to go similar, just I think a little bit more high scoring. I think both run, both teams put up a little more runs. I'm going to go 7-6 to six mm. Harbor Hawks. I think the pitching staffs have had some good success so far, but it's the Cape Cod Baseball League. A lot of good hitters, mm-hmm. a lot of good players overall. So I think seven runs for the Hawks, six runs for the Firebirds. You can book it. But we both agree, close game tonight. Mm-hmm. Eldridge Park, a field that we haven't had a lot of success at so far to start the year. And again, on the road, not great so far, but hopefully you can get back on the right track tonight. Even a tough win is a win. So looking for a, a good win, a quality win, but nonetheless something that goes in the column on the left. That makes that number a little bit bigger. I agree, Mike. Hopefully we sweep one out tonight. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Come see us at Eldridge Park. And if you can't make it, catch us right here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network on YouTube or over on Cape League TV. Watch us on Huddle. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you for joining me. Go Hawks. Woo!